was wondering if you guys have ever had like a journal, like an old journal or um, like old messages from somebody else or, or notes from high school that you've ever read as an adult. About a year ago, I was doing a major declutter of the house and I found all of these old journals from when I was a teenager. I found notes from when I was a teenager and I found this one notebook that was just chock full of all my teenagey angst. Like, oh, I was so maligned and everything it was so horrible. And I was reading through them and I was like, this is horrible. I don't want to read this stuff anymore. I don't want to go back to that stuff. I have the memories of it, but I don't want to relive it. And I got rid of that notebook. It was like a yellow marble notebook. And I remember I just threw it away. And I was like, am I allowed to do this? Am I just allowed to throw away a year's worth of my, um, my thoughts and dreams and hopes, but mostly complaints? But I did, and I have never missed it again. Hi, Colleen. Um, and I've never missed those journals again. I threw away all of them because I thought, well, like if I died, would I want my kid to read this, this junk? And I, I didn't, and that was just like my decision. And as I think about rereading this old crap that I have, I started to notice in my clients how they do the same thing, but they generally do it with this. They will, they will come into a session and they'll open up their phone and they'll be like, let me tell you what he said. And then he said this and then I said that and they'll go back and forth until I put a stop to it. I actually uh, started instituting a rule where I wouldn't let clients take out their phones anymore. They would reread messages, reread emails, reread messenger messages. And so I just stopped having them do it because they would just create this groove where they would be just like, and then he said, and then I said, and it's just really bad for our brains to reread crap that doesn't serve us. And maybe you've done this too. Maybe you've like re told yourself a story of a transgression that somebody else made or, or an interaction that was painful or, or hurtful to you. And then you re relive it and relive it. And I realize that I do this too. Like I retell stories of painful old times and they don't help me heal. They don't help us get better. They just make the wound deeper. And this week I'm talking a lot about this in my blog post and my podcast and here with you now, how if you had like um, a groove or, or if you took a pen to a desk, which we used to do when we were kids, we would be on the phone talking and we would take like a ballpoint pen and like write our initials in the desk. I don't know why we did this moronic thing, but we did. And the more that we sat there and went over this, the initials over and over and over again, the deeper it would get. And it didn't make it better and it didn't make it go away. It just made the groove deeper. And that's what we do when we revisit these old messages and we reread them over and over again. And we reread them with our anger and our hurt um, or fear. And we reread them with our tones that we put onto them. And so I wanted to check in with you today after a weekend probably spent with family and maybe you had a hard weekend, maybe you had a wonderful weekend, but it, maybe you spent some time with people who didn't fill you up. Maybe you spent some time with people who kind of bring stuff up for you. And maybe today's a good day to check in with yourself about what do I want to revisit from the past weekend? What do I want to work on? Because that's, that's fine. If you want to work on some stuff, Okay, but if you just want to replay a conversation or what somebody did to you, quote unquote, what somebody did to you, is that helping you? Because what I have found is that when my clients come to me and they open up their phone and then they tell me every single thing, it doesn't help them. They don't move past it. In fact, that stuff's like junk we have to move out of the way before we can get to the real stuff. And the real stuff is, what do you need? Who do you want to be? Who do you want to show up as in this interaction? How does replaying the problem help you? And it generally doesn't. And so what I'm writing about this week and what I'm talking about this week is being kind of big enough to say, this doesn't serve me anymore. Hi, Megan. Rereading this old shit does not serve me anymore. When I look back at my journals from when I was a kid, the one I told you that I threw away, it, it's so embarrassing. Like, it's like, oh, I can't believe that I spent my time worrying about this stuff. But it also brings me back into that moment of who I was at that time. And I don't want to spend time there. 
I've healed the stuff, I've worked through it, but I don't want to go back to it. That does not help. So I'm curious for you, if you uh, do this for yourself, if somebody says something to you and then you just keep replaying it over and over again. Now, there's a difference between just replaying it and maybe going to the person and saying, hey, this thing happened and I'd really like to work through it. That's, that's different. That's very healing. That's like helpful. It doesn't work with everybody, but that's helpful. But just replaying it over and over and over keeps you really stuck. And so I'm wondering, are you feeling like a little stuck today based on maybe some stuff that happened in the past? And what can you do about that? How can you move forward rather than kind of staying stuck? I had a client who was really committed to coming in and telling me, this is what my husband texted me, or this is what my friend texted me. And um, we really had to work through that as a, a coping mechanism for her because she felt like this was the best way to cope with it. And actually it was just really holding her back. So I wanted to just check in with you today and wonder um, how much time and energy are you spending on things that don't it's so true, Megan says, it's so true, I can get stuck, it's a bad habit. And I'm glad you said that, Megan, because it is just a habit. It's just like this thing that we do. It kind of soothes us in the moment. It's very like, let me show you what he said. And then it kind of feels good to indulge in that crappy conversation and like to get the feedback from somebody else. But I will never forget this moment. This is 10 years ago and my brother-in-law was uh we were together for a weekend and i want i was telling him a story and i was so uptight da, 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 da. i was telling him this whole thing and i was waiting for him to say oh my god that's so terrible i can't believe that happened what was she thinking and he just looked at me and he's like well you can either be right about it or you can be happy about it was, oh, no you can either be right or you can be happy is what he said and i was like but wait a second, being right makes me happy. And in that moment, I realized the fun of it was in retelling it and maybe getting him involved and getting him jammed up about it too, because that would have felt really good. It did feel really good, but it didn't solve anything. It's like that, that groove in the desk that I'm talking about. It doesn't make it better to go back over the problem. How can I work through the problem is the question that I need to ask myself, not how can I relive the problem or the story. And uh, today, the, this weekend, I was kind of chatting in my Time Masters group where we're talking a lot about how to harness our time and master our time. This is one of those things that sucks time from us because it sucks our energy. It's not productive, so it doesn't help us with our time. So if you tend to do this, and it's just a habit, like Megan said, it's, it's a habit. Um, I want you to start thinking about how can you break this habit? How can you stop doing it? Now, it'll feel really weird as you're starting to learn how to do it. Like you're going to trip over yourself. You're going to be like, oh my God, let me tell you about, wait, no, that's not going to help. Let's talk about maybe how I can work through it, but let me not reiterate the whole thing to you. So I ask you to check in with yourself. If you really want to move through the problem, that's very different. But just going back and indulging in the rereading and the retelling and, and, and like the drama of that, is it giving you back the time that you want and is it solving your problem? I know for me and for my clients, it does not solve the problem. It actually makes things worse and keeps us really stuck, stuck in the groove. So um, I'm curious, does this resonate with you at all? Does this sound familiar? Do you have this habit? And please don't be embarrassed about having this habit because just it's just a habit. It's not like, it doesn't mean you're a terrible person or a jerk. It means, oh, I've become a little unaware and now I need to break the habit. So I'm curious, am I the only one? Or is it just me and Megan, the two of us? Megan, you and I are the only two on the planet, right, who have this problem. Uh, so I'd love to hear what it is. And if you need any help with it, reach out to me. In my Time Masters group, we're totally working on this this week. We're talking about how we get kind of caught up in other people's BS and how it keeps us stuck. And if you want to join us over there, it's totally free. Oh, hey, Julie, you do it too, huh? <laughs> it's not just me and Megan. I think it's just kind of a thing that we get used to doing. And it's kind of fun in the moment. It's like this thing that we get to talk about. Like, let me tell you all about this. And uh, it's entertaining. It's entertainment. Uh, and it's just not a way that I'm going to 
entertain myself anymore. Megan says, that's good advice. Sometimes I lose sleep and that's just something I can't afford to do. It's not just us. Yay. Oh, your husband. Oh, and your husband. So when you live with somebody who indulges that with you, that's even worse because then it's like, it's just right there. Now, my husband will not put up with this nonsense. I don't know how I, I lucked out and got this guy. He will not put up with that. So I have to like kind of go outside the house to get my fix of it. But uh, it's easy to get addicted to because you just like keep going around and going around and if you're in the habit of it, the question kind of becomes like, well, what else are we going to talk about? So I challenge you to think about this and just become aware. You don't even have to do anything about it right now, except just become aware of the fact that it's a habit. You know, my, my whole thing, there's three things. Don't judge yourself, but become aware without judgment and then make a teeny tiny step. And I started to become aware of this 10 years ago with my brother-in-law who told me, you could be happy or you could be right, but you can't be both. And ever since then, I've been kind of working on this. I still work on this. Even though I help my clients with it, I'm still working on it too. So I wanted to get on and remind you, stop pulling out your phone. Stop looking at old texts that don't serve you. Throw away that crappy journal of yours from middle school because nobody needs to read that crap anymore, especially you. Help yourself get to the next point not by rereading your old stories, but by rewriting what's going to happen next. Write the next chapter. Stop rereading the old chapters. Okay? Let me know if it's just the three of us, me and Julie and Megan, right? Bye, everybody.